I'm Sarah Barrett. I'm a solicitor and partner in our real estate dispute resolution team. And I'm here today to talk about how to resolve landlord and tenant disputes. Well, a landlord and tenant dispute can be absolutely any dispute between any landlord and a tenant of theirs. So it could be a commercial dispute or a dispute concerning commercial property, residential property, anywhere where there's a landlord and tenant relationship and a dispute arises for whatever reason. A landlord and tenant dispute can occur for any number of reasons. Any dispute over provisions in the lease, for example, or if the landlord wants to recover possession of their property for whatever reason, all of those can result in a dispute between landlord and tenant. The best way of preventing disputes between landlords and tenants really depends upon the relationship between the landlord and tenant and the reason for the disputes. Some disputes are unavoidable, but generally speaking, maintaining a good relationship between the parties, having discussions, talking about issues should hopefully resolve the majority of landlord and tenant disputes. Certainly having a written agreement between landlord and tenant can help resolve disputes because it should be clear from the terms of the agreement exactly what each party's rights and responsibilities are under that agreement. So that should remove any dispute about um, who is responsible for what or who has what rights. Pre-action protocols um, exist in the dispute resolution arena in order to hopefully resolve matters at a pre-action stage and avoid the necessity for court proceedings. So in the landlord and tenant um, arena, there are a number of pre-action protocols, including in relation to housing conditions for residential properties, if um, the landlord is a social landlord, then there's a pre-action protocol that applies to possession proceedings brought by social landlords. For commercial property, there is a dilapidations protocol. If you are dealing with a debt, then there's a debt protocol. That's not specific to landlord and tenant disputes, but it may be a protocol which landlords want to refer to. And if there is no specific pre-action protocol, then there is a practice direction on pre-action conduct which governs everything else. Pre-action protocols are important because it provides a framework for the parties to try and resolve their disputes and hopefully to avoid the necessity of going to court. If the parties don't disclose information at an early stage then the dispute may be prolonged, it may cost more to resolve if there's a lot of toing and froing between professional advisors for example, and if the matter proceeds to court and documents are only produced at that stage and the parties haven't had an opportunity to consider them at an earlier stage then the court um, may impose some cost penalties in relation to that. ADR stands for Alternative Dispute Resolution, basically means any method of trying to resolve the dispute other than going to court or a tribunal. So it covers a whole variety of different methods of resolving disputes and it's encouraged to avoid the parties having to go through that expensive and time-consuming court or tribunal process. Mediation is an important tool in the ADR options that are available to the parties. Um, it involves an independent third party speaking to the parties in the dispute, going between them, trying to resolve the dispute and perhaps suggesting ways of resolving the dispute that might not otherwise be available to the court. Negotiation is needed in property disputes really at every stage. So that can be informally between the parties themselves 
uh, before professionals such as lawyers are instructed. It could be once lawyers are instructed then there is always ongoing negotiation between the parties through correspondence or by a telephone call or something of that nature to see whether a resolution can be reached. So negotiation needs to be an ongoing process. If a landlord and tenant dispute does end up at court, then there are a number of things that need to be considered, including things such as the cost of the court proceedings, um, the time that is taken in dealing with the court proceedings, making sure that the documentation and evidence that is necessary to support the party's position in those court proceedings is available or can be obtained and ensuring compliance with the court's um, directions. Landlords should consider instructing us to help them to resolve any disputes because we have a specialist and experienced team uh, that deal exclusively with property disputes. We work hard to um, try and resolve disputes to avoid um, court or tribunal proceedings if possible, but if they are necessary then we have the skills, experience and expertise to guide you through the process and to represent you in those proceedings. Court proceedings should be avoided if at all possible because they are expensive, they're time consuming and if matters can be resolved without having to put the matter in the hands of the court, uh, the parties have some control over that process. You aren't putting matters into the decision making powers of a third party and hopefully it can preserve relationships. So if there will be an ongoing relationship between landlord and tenant then that can be salvaged hopefully if the matter can be resolved out of court. Most landlord and tenant disputes can be resolved without having to go to court if the parties are fully engaged in trying to find a resolution and are committed to that process. There is some creative thinking going on and the parties are open to offers that are made or open to suggestions that are made in mediation. By all means, yes, solutions can be found to avoid the necessity of going to a court or tribunal. I hope you found that information useful and if you do have any questions about any landlord and tenant disputes and you require any further information then please don't hesitate to contact the Real Estate Dispute Resolution team here at Muckle.